Today we're in the green pastures of Vancouver's historic Mountain View Cemetery, and we're remembering Janet Smith, who was the victim of Vancouver's most infamous unsolved murder. Janet was born in Scotland in 1902. She was working as a nanny in 1923 when she came to Vancouver with her wealthy employer, Fred Baker. Along with Fred's wife, Doreen, baby Rosie and Chinese servant Wong Foon Sang, they were staying at a house on Osler Street in the exclusive Shaughnessy Heights neighborhood. And that's where Janet's body was discovered on July 26, 1924. Her death would become a sensational story, exposing police and political corruption, media ethics, drug trafficking, systemic racism, and rumors of a cover-up that went all the way to the lieutenant governor. Today we're going to visit some of the locations of the infamous case, and thanks to an FOI request, we'll uncover information that just might reveal who killed Janet Smith. Stay tuned, friends. The infamous Osler Street house was built in 1912, and it's still standing. On July 26, 1924, Point Grey Police Constable James Green came to this house after receiving a lunchtime call from Fred Baker. Fred said his servant Wong called him at work saying something was wrong with Janet. Fred came home immediately. Wong said he was peeling potatoes in the kitchen when he heard a bang like a car backfire. Confused, he thought he should go down to the basement and check on Janet and he found her body on the floor. So Cop Green went down and found Janet's body lying beneath the laundry tub. He saw a bullet wound in her forehead, and making no effort to preserve fingerprints, Cop Green picked up a gun he found beside her. He quickly determined that Janet committed suicide. In 1924, Vancouver victims of violent death would be sent here to Vancouver General Hospital for autopsy. Mysteriously, though, police ordered Janet to a nearby funeral home for immediate cleaning and embalming. The undertaker found no powder marks around the bullet entry wound, almost as if the bullet had been fired from some distance away. He found burn marks on her body, but none on her clothes, almost as if someone was trying to keep her body warm to suggest she died at a later time. The back of Janet's head had damage inconsistent with a bullet's exit wound. Was it possible someone shot Janet in the face after she died from the injury to the back of her head to stage a suicide? Two days later, Janet's body did show up at the morgue. Autopsist Doc Hunter was surprised that the body had been embalmed. And after examination, he was totally confused by the suicide theory. At the coroner's inquest in Point Grey, he said the injury on the back of her head was not from a bullet, but the cops all testified that Janet had committed suicide. After deliberating for less than 15 minutes, the jury found that Janet's death was accidental, and the next day Janet was buried at Mountain View. With sensational newspaper stories, the city became obsessed with the case. Was Cop Green bribed by wealthy Fred Baker? Rumors of a wild party that night with booze and drugs. Did a wealthy guest kill Janet? In 1924, nearly a third of Vancouver's population was Scottish, and they aggressively lobbied for further investigation into the death of their fair sister. So Attorney General Alex MacDonald instructed the provincial police to undertake an independent investigation. Just after 8 p.m. on Tuesday, August 12, 1924, the case took a bizarre turn. Servant Wong stepped off a street car here on the corner of Cordova and Carroll Streets. Suddenly, a large black car drove up and two men violently abducted him. He was taken to the nearby Empire Building. They beat Wong, and with the help of a Chinese interpreter, they told him to confess to Janet's murder. But Wong repeated his potato peeling story that he told at the inquest. And after a few hours, the abductors let Wong go. Succumbing to mounting pressure, authorities dug up Janet's body for a second inquest. And it took place here at the courthouse on Georgia Street. It was a near riot as hundreds of people fought to get a seat inside. And the hearing was unreal. To ensure that Wong was telling the truth in his testimony, he was forced to decapitate a chicken 
in a blood oath. And his court-appointed interpreter was, you guessed it, the same guy that was used in his abduction. While the testimony of other witnesses like Cop Green were inconsistent, Wong's potato peeling story stayed the same. The jury this time found that Janet had indeed been murdered. By whom, they could not say. On March 20, 1925, there was little progress in the case. Wong was back here at the Osler house in his basement bedroom. Suddenly, some men burst in and violently abducted him. And Wong disappeared. For six weeks, Wong was chained up inside a house right about here on West King Edward. Wong later said he was tortured and interrogated with guns pointed at him and a noose put around his neck. He was beaten so badly he went deaf in one ear, but he stuck to his potato story. After he was finally recovered, there was still no evidence against Wong, but this didn't stop Attorney General Manson from agreeing to charge Wong with Janet's murder. While awaiting trial, Wong was incarcerated in Ocala Prison. The prison is gone now, but the old front steps are still here. Poor Wong was in bad shape from weeks of torture, Initially, Attorney General Manson forbid anyone from seeing him here, but after growing pressure, he finally permitted Wong's attorney to visit him. The lawyer found Wong being held in a storage shed outside the main prison building. Back here at the old courthouse, the case against Wong proceeded, and new details emerged. There were incinerated women's clothes found in the basement fireplace, and police had done ballistics testing using the decapitated head of a psychiatric patient. But the jury quickly decided there wasn't any evidence to convict Wong. After several months of incarceration, he was set free. And that's when the authorities introduced another shocking turn in the case. This is the northwest corner of Seymour and Hastings Streets, and this is where the majestic Empire Building once stood. It is the site of Wong's first abduction and beating, and it is also where provincial police stormed into a private detective's office and laid charges in the second abduction of Wong. Several men were charged, including the detectives, Point Grey police, police commissioners, and the Reeve or mayor of Point Grey. There was another incredible court case in which the men charged told the court they had just been following orders in a political game and they implicated Attorney General Manson testifying that he knew everything. The majority of them were acquitted, but A.G. Manson's political career was soon over. Here in Burnaby's Pacific Heritage Cemetery is the final resting place of Alex Manson. After the Janus Smith case, Manson became a Supreme Court judge. Shortly before he died in 1963, a reporter asked him about the Janet Smith case. Manson replied, Heaven will be the judge of all that happened back then. And what became of Fred and Doreen Baker? For that, we'll head back to Mountain View, the same cemetery where Janet Smith is interred. Alongside a roadway here, we find the lonely grave of Doreen Baker. There doesn't appear to be any other family beside her. Doreen lived until 1964, and she may have taken secrets to the grave with her. But it is interesting that she perhaps chose not to be interred with her husband Fred, perhaps a clue that she didn't want to be associated with something he did throughout eternity. As it turns out, Fred is interred far away on Vancouver Island, and in another first here on the JCVC channel, we're going to visit his plot. Stay tuned, friends. All right, we're here at the beautiful Qualicum Beach Cemetery. On the right is Richard Baker, and on the left, his brother, Fred Baker. Although he was the subject of many rumors, Fred was never charged in Janet's death. 
After he passed away, though, more was revealed about him. It turns out that Fred was being investigated by Scotland Yard. FOI requests decades later revealed that Fred was smuggling drugs around the world, including Russia and China. Intercepted letters from Fred revealed he was selling narcotics by the ton. His business partner was arrested shortly before Fred moved his family from Europe back to Vancouver. At the preliminary hearing against Servant Wong, Fred even admitted to dealing in morphine, opium and cocaine. So were drugs involved in Janet's murder? Did she know too much? Beside Fred's grave is his daughter Rosie. She was the baby that Janet was hired to care for, born in 1922 and passed away in 2010. She married and had two children, lived for many years in Calgary. Her father Fred's life was a mystery, and so was his death. And for that, we need to head back to Vancouver. Stay tuned, friends. In 1956, Fred was here at the St. Regis Hotel in downtown Vancouver. The newspaper published an overly detailed story that Fred had a sudden interruption of blood supply to his brain, mistook a window for the door, and plunged to his death on the sidewalk. But the coroner determined that it was, in fact, a suicide. Which begs the question, was Fred troubled by so much guilt he ended his life? Ironically, the hotel's namesake, St. Regis, was best known for his work with at-risk women. Nice plaque here says that the St. Regis' big neon sign dates back to the 1920s. So it would have been one of the last things Fred saw before he died. Fred's death may have forever ended the possibility of solving the Janet murder smith, but there is one final chapter that may hold the answer. Just a few blocks away from the Osler Death House, this is the beautiful Highcroft Mansion at Granville and 15th. It was built by the powerful and wealthy General Alex McRae. There were rumors that Alex's daughter Lucille McRae was at Fred Baker's party that night. But the real key to solving the case comes right across the street at the Nickel House. In 1924, powerful Walter Nickel was the Lieutenant Governor. His playboy son, Jack, who lived here, had addictions that were so bad he sought treatment at New Westminster's Hollywood Sanitarium. Jack got married in 1923, but when Janet died a few months later, Jack's new wife left him. Decades after Janet died, a letter was discovered from Attorney General Manson to Janet's parents. He said provincial police knew who killed their daughter, but he wasn't arrested because it would have disgraced the family of Lieutenant Governor Nickel. He also wrote the killer had spent several months in New Westminster's Hollywood Sanitarium. In 1941, Jack Nickel was on his deathbed. He told his nurse that he attended a party here at the Baker's that night. Drunk, he went into the second floor bathroom to sober up by putting his head under the shower. Janet Smith appeared on the landing to bring him a towel. Lucille McRae happened to cross this and flew into a rage. She started throwing punches at Jack and Janet. Somehow during the fray, Janet slipped on the water-soaked floor. She fell and hit her head on a bathtub spigot. And Jack said, that's how she died. If you ever visit Sweet Janet's grave here at Mountain View, you might notice the broken post, which symbolizes a life cut short. As for Wong Foon Singh, after he was acquitted, he left Vancouver for Hong Kong, never to be heard from again. Cop Green, who was first on the scene, well, after the case, he suddenly had a whole bunch of money and became a hotel owner. Janet's memorial stone says she met her death while in the bloom of youth at Shaughnessy Heights on July 26, 1924. On earth one gentle soul less, in heaven one angel more. Thank you for watching this little taste old Vancouver as she once was. I'm Jean-Claude Vancouver and until next time, be good to the other.